Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. I just realized how stupid of a title that is, considering that the lead character's name in this game is Guts, not Berserk. So I don't know who, who Berserk is or what they have to do with Band of the Hawk, but there you go. This is going to be a very deja vu -y video, because I did do a video on the Japanese version of this, and they've basically changed nothing in this one, so... You know, if you've already seen my video on that one, you pretty much know what I think about this one already. I've been playing on it easy just because I haven't been bothered doing anything. Um, all the options here are pretty obvious. There's not that much difference in the difficulties except for Berserk, where you die if you take a couple of hits. You can change your controls, you can change your camera settings, you got your volume sliders. You can obviously check the manual, which has all the different pages of the manual in here, which is kind of nice. It's nice to have this available in the game, although notably you can still access the manual from out here, even though there's actually not like a manual in here. Usually you'd expect them to do that in a game where you can't actually access the manual without closing the game, but there you go. And just so you know, I have been playing for about three hours at this point, and I'm basically exactly at the point where I was in my last video, which is, this is going to feel even weirder than it did previously, but... We'll go play a stage on free mode before we go do anything else, really. You know, go and explain the equipment or anything like that. Maybe show off a cutscene or two. Naked people. Yeah, a little bit odd like that, but yeah. It, this game covers, like, almost the majority of the Berserk story that's out at this point. I can't remember exactly where it cuts off, but it's got, like, the, the majority of the arcs. So... I'm just going to have to pick a stage here. A lot of these stages are actually very similar and very, what's the word I'm looking for? Very, um, filler. It's a little odd, but anyway, we'll just pick a stage and we can play anyone we want, including good old Zod. I I'm just, I'm just think of General Zod from, um, the Superman movies, but we'll pick someone else. Pick Griffith, because Griffith is an interesting character. We're playing on free mode just so we don't spoil any of the story. I will go show off some of the cutscenes and stuff like that, but I've been warned that if I don't put this massive copyright notice over the top, I will get absolutely destroyed. So, so there you go. We won't bother with um any of the equipment stuff right now, but it is very basic. It is very basic, um, what's it called? Musu style stuff, because this is a Musu game. It's made by Omega Force, and it's basically the Dynasty Warriors games with a Berserk theme on the top, so away we go. It actually kind of looks like um, Attack on Titan more than your typical Dynasty Warriors game, at least uh, stylistically. I mean, take that little gate there and put that into Attack on Titan and uh, you, nobody would probably skip a B. But anyway, it's a Musu game, so what do you do in a Musu game? You mash the square and the triangle button for the most part. So your square button's your normal attack, and you can chain them together with the triangle button to do strong attacks, and you unlock m more moves as you level up. It's that simple, really. You do have a quick step via the X button, which is perfectly good because there are some big enemies in this game that can hurt you if they do get a decent hit in on you, but you do have the ability to quick step out of the way, which is nice. We can, um, you can do other things, like, of course, you've got your horse on your top left corner of your touchscreen. You've got the ability to lock on to a big guy on the bottom left corner of the screen. I think there's a couple of other tap screen controls. Yeah, like, top right is the, uh, map that just zooms it in and out. Pretty obvious stuff, really. There is, of course, the rage mode, but we'll get into that once we unlock it. I think they call it Frenzy in this game, actually, but it's basically a... Rage or a Musu mode or whatever. I'll just de defeat this archery officer because it'll give me another sub goal, which will make the um. It should give me another sub goal, which will make the frenzy mode a little bit more useful. I guess not. All right, so let's actually go and use the frenzy mode on something. So, bitches, hit circle and you go into frenzy mode. And when you're in frenzy mode, you can you deal more damage, you move faster, and most characters can str string together a bunch of normal attacks. Like, infinitely. It just goes on forever. Like, look at me. I'm not even stopping. Didn't do very well to get much special meter going on there, but oh well. 
You do have a big ass special attack that you can use when you fill up that meter on the bottom left there. But you can only fill up that meter on the bottom left when you're in the when you're in the frenzy mode, which kind of sucks actually. You do have like disposable items that you can use that might help you with this, but I'm not actually carrying any of them with me right now, which kind of sucks. I think you can hear my dog walking in the background. So yeah, you can use items via the D-pad and the R button. Like this one here will make enemies drop gold. You know the drill. There's ones that'll give you health back. There's ones that'll give you frenzy meter. There's ones that'll give you the death blow meter, which is the uh, thing in the bottom left that's orange. You know, it's all pretty obvious. You do also have sub weapons, which is kind of neat. So I do have the ability to counter. Which is very useful if you can time it right. Other characters do have other sub weapons, like for example, most of them have this crossbow, which is basically just a great area of effect stunner. He's dead. And Casca, who's the character I'll show up after this in another free mode stage, is the character who um, has a close combat maneuver, where they'll hop on. She'll hop on the back of a guy's head and snap his neck with her leg, and it's kind of great. Okay, so just gotta keep beating the ever-loving bejesus out of all these guys, because it's a Musu game. Like, what else are you gonna do in a Musu game? Alright, we can go Frenzy mode again. Um, yeah, it's Frenzy mode. I don't even bother to remember all of them just because they're all so similar, you might as well just call them by their normal Dynasty Warriors names. Yeah, there we go, a bit of a... Bit, bit of decapitation there. The game is actually decidedly gory for a Dynasty Warriors style game, which is a neat change. I, I don't know if I'm just... I don't know if I was just, like, not really paying attention in the Japanese version, or maybe the... Was the Dismemberment even in the Japanese version? It's been a while since I've played it, so... Yeah, it might have been freshly added for this version, which is a... Well, I was gonna say a little odd, but... Japan are uh, with violence the same way America is with sex, so... It's not really that surprising that the Dismemberment didn't make it into the Japanese version if it didn't, so... Yeah. So we have to beat all of these guys up and that'll be the end of the stage. Thankfully, since I'm playing with easy, these stages are a hell of a lot shorter. Like, stages that would take me like 20 minutes in the um, first game would take me like 10 if you're playing on easy, and I much prefer that. So, um, let's actually get... Let's actually get a, um, a death blow attack in. Or at least I hope I can get it in this time, so... Right, let's do this. Alright, death blow attack time. I completely missed everyone. Oh, no, got some of them. But yeah, uh, that... Yeah, it's just a special animation. Usually it, it pops into its own animation for that, but it didn't for, for, for that for some reason. But yeah, as you can see, I have filled my meter up a little bit more again, and if I'm fast enough to actually fill the meter up again, I can do it a second time and actually get the proper animation. That's more like it. The more times you use Frenzy Mode in a battle, the more effective it gets. So you can see that there's a 3 down there. When the meter fills up, you get an extra number on that, and that just means you're more effective in Frenzy Mode. And... we're done. Very quick stage, thankfully. Because, you know, thank God, right? Don't want to spend too, too long on this game, because I've basically played the exact same game before, so... Oh well. The action, it's its a late-gen Vita Musu game. That's basically all it is. The, the action is somewhat satisfying. There's not that many enemies. There's a fair few, don't get me wrong, but it definitely doesn't match up to Dynasty Warriors next, Shin Gundam Musu, or even Dynasty Warriors 8, which is a little bit disappointing. You'd always hope for a bit more. And while it, you might say that this might actually be a problem with the Vita version, it's actually not. I went and looked up footage of the PS4 version a little while back, and... It has about the same amount of enemies, which is odd, but I won't argue too much with it. So, um, we'll do a 
second stage before we go fucking around with all the equipment and all that. We'll play as Casca this time, just to show off a couple of extra characters. I have to show off the Eclipse mode too, which is this game's secondary mode, obviously, but I'm going to be doing that with Guts, because that's my main character, and I've unlocked uh, level 21 through 25 with him already, so we'll be able to show that off instead. So, let's just hop straight into the battle again. Again, a lot of these stages really do just feel like weird amounts of filler. It's kind of strange. Like, they're... I guess it's meant to... So that they can do the story beats in between. But the story beats aren't even that... Aren't even that... What's the word I'm looking for? They aren't even that, like, detailed or anything like that. I feel like I'm missing something with this game's presentation of the story. Like... I read about the beginning of... I know this is going to sound fucking weird, but I read about the beginning of Berserk on Wikipedia, and, as a spoiler alert, Guts gets sexually molested by someone he trusts. He then goes on to kill that person he trusts. The only reason I'm not saying that person's name is because I can't bloody remember it. And the game doesn't make mention of that at all. It just says, Guts was betrayed by so-and-so. Instead of saying something along the lines of, um... Instead of saying something along the lines of he was sexually molested. It's a bit weird like that. The localization as well isn't particularly great. I mean, the writing isn't particularly that good. And there's one really big thing that I wanted to bring up. Just because it's the it's been stuck in my mind ever since I actually noticed it. In the third mission, one of the characters says Woot. Unironically. Yes, Woot. W-O-O-T. Not with, not with zeros, but with the letter O. I... I might not be that big of a fan of Berserk, I might not know that much about it, or understand that much about it, but even I know that's not fucking right. Here's a close combat move. Oh, no, it's just a slam. Oh, no, that might have been a snap of the, snap of the neck. Let's, let's just lock onto this guy. But the game itself is, it's serviceable Musu. It's, it's... I really don't know what to say that isn't it's serviceable, more or less. It it works. It's pretty quick. It holds a decent level of performance except during like the big fancy animations and stuff. And it doesn't look that bad. I mean it doesn't really uh it, again, it doesn't really beat games like Dynasty Warriors 8 or Shin Gundam Moose. So those are my two go-tos. Which makes it even more disappointing that Shin Gundam Musu didn't come out in English, just purely because of how much I liked Shin Gundam Musu for what it bloody was. I haven't played that game since I did my video on it, which kind of disappoints me. I haven't had time for it. But, yeah. It still matches... It at least matches up to those games. If not, stays below them a little bit sometimes. I mean, it's not the most visually impressive thing, but I don't think that was the point of Berserk to begin with. So, yeah, we just gotta stay here and keep the red exclamation points from reaching us. I should probably just use my, um, frenzy mode here. And just use it to take this guy out. Gotcha. That's got a sting. It's very lightweight. I mean, there is, it is a fair bit heavier than you'd typical Musu game, especially with Guts, because Guts is huge and slow, but has massive attack range. But it is still a little bit slower and a little bit heavier than your typical Musu game, so if you're looking for something like that just to shake things up a little, this will do you just fine. Look, there's a decent amount of characters. I've only unlocked a couple of them, obviously, because I haven't had that much time to go through the story or anything like that, but still, it works. It... It does what it needs to as a Musu game. It just doesn't really move the formula forward or anything like that, which is kind of expected when it comes to uh, Dynasty Warriors games. Since it's not one of their own mainline games, they don't really need to move the formula forward or anything like that. But at the same time, it's hard not to be disappointed considering that, you know, the series has needed a massive boost forward in the past couple of years, especially since there's been, like, five Samurai Warriors games based on the same generation and they've just gone boring and they've still got to release freaking um, Musu Stars which God only knows how much difference there that one is. I'll be getting that, the Japanese version by the way if you're, plan if you're wondering if I'm going to be getting that or not. 
And, um... Yeah, so it's just... It's just disappointing that it's not as... It's not as big of a step forward as I would have hoped. It's a nice sidestep. Like how Dynasty Warriors Godseekers was a sidestep in, in the sense that it did something a little bit different while still maintaining the sort of, um, Musu thing. But at the same time, you know, if you're not a fan of Dynasty Warriors, this is definitely not going to change your mind. Of course, if you're, if you're a fan of Berserk, you'll probably enjoy it. But again, a character says Woot. So, I, I can't be 100% sure now. Because, like, does does anyone in Berserk say Woot? It seems entirely inappropriate for a character in a Berserk anything. Even with what little I know about the series, hearing a character say Woot just does not sound right. I'm sorry, buddy. I was aiming for your friend. So yeah, that was the end of that stage. Again, very short. I mean, for demonstration purposes, it works alright. Very, very basic Dynasty Warriors style game. So I'll go and I'll show off a few cutscenes and we'll go into the... We'll go into the Endless Eclipse mode after that. The presentation in this game is actually pretty good when it um when it's at its peak. Because it has these cutscenes from what appear to be the new anime, but it might be like produced specifically for this game, but I'm probably probably not. Probably not. Then there's three render um pre-rendered 3D cutscenes, and then there's um the sort of Attack on Titan style scenes where they've got them standing where they've got the 3D model standing and they just um talk voice lines at each other. So we'll go and have a look at a couple of those at least. So if we go into the gallery, obviously, everything you expect from a gallery is here. So you got your characters, your dictionary, you've got your events, which is um this is this is some of the clips. And you've got your awards down here, which is worth noting. Whenever you get something in a story mission or anything called a Behalit, it's basically these. They're just meant to help you unlock um special illustrations. But yeah, as you can see, you collect a bunch of these at a different different a different kind of places. And that's just how you do your 100% completion, more or less. It doesn't really, um, doesn't really break the game or anything. So, let's do the first battle. This is an, this is an event, so... Will this be one of the cutscenes? Probably, maybe. Just waiting. Yeah, this is an event.俺たちの仕事は敵の食料と補給物資を焼き払うことだ。奇襲を仕掛け、仕事が済んだら一目散に撤退する。援護はない。敵の野衆に備えるために、この作戦に避ける戦力はないそうだ。け、更新抜けど
scene from the anime. ご存知<笑> It's nicely presented. I, I mean, I, I really got nothing against those cutscenes, although it's a bit weird when they swap between the anime and the and the pre 3D pre-rendered stuff, but still, it's not bad. Looks nice. Does its job. Makes things a little bit more interesting to watch. So, let's go into the Endless Eclipse mode. This is basically the game's, um... It's a lot like the 100th Floor Tower in Samurai Warriors 4-2. So yeah, again, it's just a... It's just a little bit disappointing. You can level up characters by um, paying tons of gold if you want to... Uh, level them up to your highest level character, but yeah. So we're gonna go straight to layer 21, considering layer 1 through 20 took me like 30 minutes. Not entirely sure why, I remember it taking me a lot longer, or maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just having more fun because I put the game on easy, who knows. But anyway, yeah, we'll just skip this. So, the way this works is that you get a desire here, which, which is basically a... It's not even really like a side quest. It's just It just helps you determine what you're going to be doing this time around. And this one has behelots that we can go get. And you get different rewards. And you can get different rewards as you go down into the different layers as well. But unfortunately, I can only go down to layer 25 because I haven't gone far enough, far enough in the story to unlock the rest of the levels yet. You do have to get story progression, which is kind of annoying because... I could probably go straight down to level 100 without even trying on easy if I um, if I was able to, but unfortunately you can't do that. So here's the game's way of progressing your characters. Obviously you can level up and get all your um, get all your four stats down there level up. Obviously those are some pretty basic stuff, and you can also equip accessories. Accessories have different abilities. And they also have different stat boosts. So, as you can see here, this one's got Vitality up on it and it's locked to it, which means I'll need a different accessory if I want to get rid of that. And you can, you, you've can, you also got other abilities like Defense Up, easier to stun enemies, uh, makes it easy get makes it harder to get staggered. You also get different War Horses, but, um, well, I mean, this one very clearly beats out pretty much every other horse I've got at the moment. And this is the horse you get by going down to level 10 of the Endless Eclipse, so... It's funny, they call it the Endless Eclipse and it only goes down 100 levels. It's a bit weird. You can buy and sell accessories and materials here. Every time you're in the store, you might as well pick up these different materials, just because, you know, there's no reason not to. You'll probably be rolling in gold as soon as you start the game. You can enhance these, so if I were to pick, say, one of the accessories I've got equipped, I can put a different stone into it, it'll increase its power, it might increase one of the abilities equipped to it, and it will take away some of my resources in the process, you can get your accessories up to plus 9. And you can eventually unlock the ability to merge accessories, which will let you merge different abilities on and stuff like that, obviously. It's a... It's... Pretty... What's the word I'm looking for? It's... Pretty... Simple, basically. Alright, so there's three behelots, it's not going to give us any hints, so we might as well just go begin the battle. The way this works is that every time you spawn on a level, it'll give you a, a small objective to do. 
And when you go do it, you'll unlock the portal to the next one. Sometimes you'll get things like merchants showing up to give you free health potions. Sometimes you'll get things like, um... Uh, war demons that will show up that are surprisingly hard to beat, but they'll have behelots. So... You, you'll want to take them out if you want to get their behelots. But that's pretty much it. It really just... It really just devolves into... Kill whatever's highlighted on the screen at the time, and then proceed to the portal. It is pretty basic. It doesn't really do that much for me, if you want me to be honest. My general uh, overwhelming feeling on Musu games is that the made to get like the actual hacking and slashing is fine, but it's not enough for me by itself. It needs a good made to game, and what I mean by made to game is both stuff you can do in other modes in order to progress the strength of your characters and the and the just the general quality of your extra mode like. Generally, the thing with, um, the thing with Warriors games and stuff like that is they need, they generally need a good secondary mode in order to keep me interested past the time I finish the story over once. Dynasty Warriors A did a fantastic job of that because that ambition mode was, like, really deep. It lets you take back a ton of stuff to the story that could help out. And it just it was just a great way to um, drop in and play the game for five or ten minutes and then just put it back down again. Unfortunately, I don't really think any other Dynasty Warriors game has really stood up to it since, which kind of sucks. So as you can see, I finished the I finished the goal on the map, but there's a little thing going up on up up the top there. So we're gonna go and take care of that. That'll be a stray war demon. It'll have a behelot, and it'll be a decent demonstration of what's going on in this mode. So there's a stray war demon. Doesn't look very tough, does it? See how much health it loses when you hit it once? It takes an age to bring these bastards down, and they can actually hit pretty hard, so... You do want to be careful. The thing about the Endless Eclipse mode is that it is basically a survival mode, where... You take in what you get from the very beginning, and you don't get to, like, replenish your... Sub weapon, not your sub weapons. You're on um, your consumable items. You don't get to replenish them until you die, basically. Um, sometimes you might be able to pick up some spare ones on the field and like that, but generally you you don't get to refresh them until you're done. So that's a thing. It's just a very it's a very self-explanatory mode, and if you literally just want to take guts in and just beat the ever-loving bejesus out of something, well, there you go. As you can see, I got like 10 grand just by beating that one thing, so it's not too hard. Now we just have to make our way to the bloody thing and go down to the next layer and do it all over again, because it's a very simple and repetitive mode. Sure, you do have, like, all different sorts of locations and enemies that you fight, but, I mean, it's a Dynasty Warriors game. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. Not really. Right, so I guess the yep, the goal here is to defeat the enemy officers. Pretty obvious as soon as you spawn in. Game runs fine for the most part, it doesn't really have any problems with keeping up the slack. Sure it slows down here and there, but it's nothing that really can't be dealt with. Might as well go bloody berserk mode or whatever. Looks like there's another war demon on this map, but I'm not going to bother fighting it again, because seriously, that that shit just gets dull. Like, honest to God. Once you've fought, like, three war demons, you don't want to fight another one of the bastards again, just because they're all so bloody similar. That is kind of a problem with the spin-off games in the Moosey series in general. They're just that similar. Sure, if you're looking for more Dynasty Warriors and you've already played the fucking dozen... Dynasty Warriors games there are on the Vita, then this will obviously do the trick. If you're looking for one to start with, the obvious answer is always Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends. Alright, gotta go beat that other guy now. Might as well just leave these guys behind, get on the horse, and away we go. It works. It, it, it works. But it doesn't do anything that impressive, so 
you're really just here for the um, for the Berserk. And if you're not here for the Berserk, then what are you here for? Since you can get the same experience on like 10 other different games. Alright, is that it? Yep. Let's just run through this portal. They all just run away, they don't even know where they're going. It's kind of strange. Alright, so it looks like the trick here is going to be kill 300 people. I'm just going to wait for the actual objective to pop up because it doesn't count if you kill people before the objective pops up, which is the most annoying fucking thing in existence, I tell ya. There's another one of those war demons, so the next one's not gonna... The next map's not gonna have one, which is... Which will be nice, because I won't have to deal with that thing just constantly beeping up. Well, not so much beeping, as much as uh, just flashing up in the top right corner there. Everybody die now. Am I, am I not done yet? Come on. There we go. Alright. Now I have to go beat Caucus. We can just, we can just ignore these guys. Charge! Oh, he turned on me. Who would have thought that would happen? He, he, he's very clearly the paragon of peace and justice, that demon-like bastard. Alright, so I guess we have to beat the shit out of Zod. My earphone just fell out of, out of my head. Good lord. Thankfully, this guy will go down a lot faster than the Stray War Demon. I could be dodging out of the way of these attacks, but I don't need to. We're done here. We've got one more level to do. And what exactly do we have to do on this one? Oh, we have to fight the boss version of Zod. Okay. It's probably good to show off. There's probably a few more bosses like this in the game. I'm, I'm not going to claim to know. I haven't read Berserk. I don't know anything about the story for the most part. Admittedly, it's been something I've been meaning to get around to. But, I mean, the list of manga that I have to read is like a mile long and... The list of the anime I need to watch is about twice that. So we get to see a boss fight now. And the boss fights, uh, yeah, it's a Dynasty Warriors boss fight. Like, what, what, what would you be expecting, honestly? I might as well use a broadsword and up my attack a bit. And just beat the ever-loving bejesus out of this guy, if I can get the hits in. Yep. 
probably should have um, made the effort to get my meter full up before I fought him, but oh well. I better get out of this like really close shave here I got going, but thankfully I have plenty of, well not plenty of healing items, but enough. Man, really? I did fucking nothing to him? That's gotta be the biggest amount of bullshit. Yeah, I'm probably gonna die. Like, there's um, not much I can do to stop this, really. Just gotta remember to try and get out of the way of his fucking attacks. He would being try, of course. Wow, in the story encounter you have with this guy, he's nowhere near this... Nowhere near this hard hitting. But yeah, basically the idea is once you get down five levels, you get asked to pick another desire, which is basically just a, another five levels. And considering that you have to do 20 levels in one sitting in order to get the, um, in order to get the, like, shortcuts down to the later levels, and you can only do it with, like, the character that you got down there with in the first place, yeah, it just, it kind of sucks. so my defense stays up. I guess I unlocked some ability to let my um, frenzy meter charge up when I was, um, when I'm close to death. I didn't realize I actually did something like that, but... Who knows, maybe I will be able to beat him. If I can stop getting hit by these massive collision boxes he's got, God. Hit a few people, get my meter back up. Nope. Oh, nope, I'm still alive, but if I get hit by a gust of wind, I die. Yep, there we go. <laughs> like, he didn't even touch me, and I just got blown halfway across the field and died. But that's Musu for you. So, yeah. That was a look at Berserk Musu. It's... It's... Uh... Garden variety Musu with a Berserk skin. If that's what you're looking for, pick it up. If it's not, well, wait for the next one. I mean, that's pretty much how it works with this series, isn't it? If it's something you like, buy it. If it's something you don't like, then don't. I I, I really got nothing else to say on it. Again, it's just same sort of the way I felt about the Japanese version when I did a video on that a few months ago. So, yeah. Well, this has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.